Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. Today's video, as you can tell from the title, is gonna be all about tape-in extensions. I'm gonna go into a whole bunch of detail and answer all of the questions that you could ever possibly have about tape-in extensions. So, I will have timestamps down in the description. So if you are just looking for specific information or you just have one specific question, check the description if you don't wanna to have to watch the whole video all the way through. So, what are tape-in extensions? How are they different from other types of hair extensions. So tape-ins are a semi-permanent hair extension, which means you don't have to take them out and put them in every single day. Once you have them installed, they stay in for several weeks. So the way that they work is you have a very thin weft. So it's just literally one thin layer of hair all attached up top and there is a sticky adhesive on one side of this weft and you take a thin piece of your real hair and you take two of these wefts and you sandwich them around a thin slice of your real hair. Um, you can do the sandwiches with two wefts or they do make just like one-sided tape. So if you just wanted like one really thin piece, you could just stick it to a little sticky adhesive that has like a clear plastic side on the outside. So I do have them installed in my hair, so I will show you kind of what they look like in the hair. So they're very thin and they lay nice and flat on your head which is nice, but they are very secure, as you can see. So yeah, you basically just take like a nice thin piece of your hair and you just sandwich these extensions over top of that. What's nice about tape-ins, especially compared to like clip-ins or sew-ins, is that they are so thin and they do lay so nice and flat on the head. So you can get like a nice full head of hair, but it's not gonna be super heavy. You're not gonna feel the extensions. Like when I run my hand on the back of my head, I don't feel anything there. It's not bulky, it's not heavy, because all of the extensions are so thin and so nicely distributed throughout my head that I don't have any like thick, heavy pieces tugging on my hair. So they're very comfortable. I used to wear clip-ins for years and I would put them in every single day. And it was a pain having to put them in and take them out every night. But the worst part about it was they were so uncomfortable, at least for me anyway, like by the end of the day, cause I like a lot of hair on my head usually. So by the end of the day, I would have a headache. My head would feel really tender. These are so, so comfortable. I never get headaches. They don't hurt, they don't bother me. Now, if you're wondering if they blend well and if you can get them installed, even if you have short hair, the answer to both of those is yes. Obviously, it's going to depend on how they are installed. I do really suggest going to a hairstylist, go to a professional, someone who specializes in tape and extensions, so they'll be able to apply them in a way that they do blend really well and add layers to them and do whatever needs to be done to help them blend. But my real hair, this is like the longest piece of my real hair. So all of this is extensions. I've also seen before and after photos on Instagram of women with pixie haircuts, like very short hair, that get tape-ins and you can't even tell. Great for adding length, volume, even if you have like a short bob but you just wanna like make it look fuller, you can add the extensions and just cut it to match the length of your hair to just add some more volume. You can also use them to add color to your hair without having to actually color your real hair. That's what I did. So you can see I have some lighter pieces thrown in there. My real hair is all just this one solid dark brown color, so I wanted to just add like a little bit bit of some lighter highlights without having to actually bleach my real hair. If you're wondering if you can still put your hair up in a ponytail, yes, you definitely can. As long as they are applied in such a way that they can stay hidden and that they can like move around and be flexible enough, you can put your hair up. For me personally, because my real hair is so short, when I go to put my hair up, my real hair just kind of falls down around the perimeter and then you can see the tapes and like it's just, it's not cute, it looks like a mess. So if you have naturally pretty short hair, uh, you, I mean you can do it if you use a lot of bobby pins, but if your natural hair is already a little bit on the longer side, then yes, you absolutely can without any problem. I don't ever really do like a high ponytail, but I can do like a low and kind of like medium one, and that works 
fine for me. If you're wondering, do they cause damage to your hair? My answer to that question is always, anything can cause damage to your hair. Even just like brushing through your hair too roughly can cause damage to it. So yes, if they are not applied properly and they're not taken care of and not removed properly, yes, they could potentially cause damage to your hair. Which again is another reason why I do recommend going to a hair salon and having a professional install and remove them for you. But if they are done properly and you are following the instructions and taking care of them properly, no, they do not cause damage to your hair. And I've had tape and extensions in my hair several times now. I want to say it's been like close to 10 times now that I have had tape and extensions installed in my hair and I have never had a bad experience. I've never had any damage done to my hair. If anything, I feel like my hair grows more and gets healthier when I have them in just because my real hair is getting protected underneath the extensions. I'm not applying as much heat to my real hair. I'm not washing my hair as often. So as far as how long they last, your real hair obviously is going to continue growing. And so they're going to get to a point where they are grown out and you're going to have a decent amount of your real hair between your scalp and where the extension is attached. And you don't want that new hair in between to grow too long because A, that's going to end up being a little heavy and creating tension and like pulling on that hair so it can eventually cause damage or cause your hair to break and B that hair in between can get all tangled up and matted and be a hot mess. Also I find on myself that as they start to grow out they're a lot harder to blend and hide like the tapes will start to kind of stick out a little bit so it's recommended like every five to eight weeks you want to have the extensions removed and then moved up higher. As far as how they are removed, they do make tape and extension remover that you just spray right at the top of the extensions and it just makes the adhesive not sticky anymore. So then they just slide right out super easily. But you can see the ingredients from the one that we use at the salon where I work. The main ingredients basically are alcohol and mineral oil. So if you wanted to do them yourself at home, in the past I've just used like hair oil, you could take a little bit of alcohol. And you can see from this clip of me removing them myself, they're not pulling Pulling out my real hair with them. They're sliding out nice and easily. You'll see that when you're removing the extensions, you will have some strands of your real hair come out as well, but don't be alarmed. Our hair is shedding every single day. I think each day you lose between 40 to 100 strands of hair. So hair that normally would be shedding and falling out is getting stuck and held in place with the tape. So then when you're removing them, you have all that hair coming out that was naturally just shedding throughout the last few weeks. It's not necessarily like fresh hair that you're prematurely ripping out of your scalp. You know what I mean? So keep that in mind. I know some people when they remove the extensions are like, oh my God, I lost so much hair. I feel so bald now. It must have damaged my hair. When that's not necessarily the case. It's just that's old hair. And the reason why your hair might feel thinner after you remove them is just because you're used to having all this extra hair on your head. So then once you take it out, you feel like you are bald. <laughs> so yes, once it's time to remove the extensions, you can just use the remover, take them right out. What I always do is I will go and check if there is like a layer of old tape on there, I will gently remove that. And then you just apply a new strip of tape, wash your hair, make sure it's nice and clean, get all that excess adhesive out of there, and then you just reapply them. As long as the quality of your extensions is good, you should be able to reuse them several times. And speaking of which, while we're on that subject, let's talk about price of hair and the different types of quality of hair that's available. So the overall cost of the hair extensions is going to depend on how much hair you need, the length that you want, and the actual amount of packs of hair that you need to blend with your real hair and achieve the look that you're going for. And the amount of hair that you get in each pack does vary depending on the brand. But for the most part, I want to say majority of packs of tape and extensions from what I've seen will come with 20 individual pieces, which means once you create the sandwiches, you're getting 10. And just to give you an idea on my head, I have 30 sandwiches or 60 individual one of these pieces in total. And I will get into the brand and color and length and all that stuff of mine specifically a little bit later, but just to give you an idea of like how much. So this is three packs of hair extensions. I'll show you like the thickness of all of it. 
okay? Just to give you an idea. So you can go online, you can go on Amazon, and you can find some really cheap hair that will cost you anywhere from like $20 to $50 per pack. Then you can go to a salon and get salon quality hair, and that's gonna range anywhere from like $80 to $200 per pack of hair. Again, it depends on the length, sometimes it depends on the color as well. And then of course you have to keep in mind that if you are going to a salon and having them installed, there's going to be the cost of the installation and that totally varies. I honestly don't even know like what's an average price that I can tell you guys because I've seen prices like all over the board. Some places have a flat rate, some places charge hourly. So it really just depends on the salon you go to and where you live. Obviously bigger cities, it's gonna be more expensive than if you're in like a smaller town. But the thing is with hair especially, you really get what you pay for. So the salon quality hair is going to be so much nicer and so much higher quality than the cheap stuff that you're gonna get online. It's gonna just look and feel nicer and it's gonna last you a lot longer. And I've tried pretty much all of it and there is a big, big difference difference. What I will say to you is, if you are someone that has never tried tape and extensions before, you're not really sure how committed you are to them, or maybe you just want them for one occasion, like you're just going on one vacation, you just want the hair for like a week or two, and then you're not planning on reinstalling it or ever reusing it again, then I would say, okay, go with the cheaper hair. And I will link the specific cheaper hair that I've used in the description if you guys wanna go and check that out. The brand was Sunny Hair. They have their own website and then they also have an Amazon store. And the quality of that was okay. It was decent. I wanna say it held up pretty well for about a month or so, but then after that, it just started to get very dried out and very tangled and matted up and did not feel or look very nice. But if you are someone that wears extensions all the time, you know that you're gonna constantly wanna reinstall them and you want the hair to last you for like a year, I would say go to a salon, get the high quality hair because it's worth it. And think about this too, like say you get the cheap hair, yeah, you might be able to get like a whole full thick head of hair for like a hundred bucks, but then if that hair is gonna be crap after a month and you're gonna have to keep repurchasing new hair every month or so, think about by the end of the year how much money you're gonna actually be spending. You know what I mean? Like it actually ends up being more worth it to just get the more expensive high quality hair because it's just gonna last you so much longer and just be so much nicer. The high quality salon hair, they say that you can reinstall at least three times. But from my experience, I have been able to do way more than that. So it really just depends on how you take care of them and like how often you wash them and stuff like that. The hair that I have installed specifically is by the brand Hair Talk. It is a salon brand, so it is not something that anyone can go online and order themselves. You do have to be a licensed hair professional or go into a salon that offers the extensions and have them ordered for you there. So like I had said earlier, I do have three packs in my hair. With the brand Hair Talk, in each pack you get 20 individual pieces, which put them together, that makes 10 sandwiches. So like I said, I have 30 sandwiches or 60 individual pieces all throughout my head. The length that I got was the 17 inches, which I did end up cutting not too long ago. So they're shorter now than how they were when I originally had them installed. I will insert a clip and show you what they looked like when they were brand new. Um, so they were a little bit longer than this. And I did two packs of the darkest brown color that they offered. So it's not black, it's like darkest brown. And then I did one pack of a blonde color so that I could kind of color it myself. And then I did end up toning them to this like ashy brown color, which I used six stroke seven one by Wella Color Touch. So it's basically just a level six ash brown, like dark blonde, light brown. So I am super happy with this hair. I first got this installed in February. It is now the end of May. So it's been almost four months that I have had this hair in and my hair's been growing pretty quick ever since I got them installed. So I've been moving them up every month. So I just recently got them installed for the third time, I believe, and they still feel amazing, just as nice, just as soft 
as when I first got them. They do not tangle easily. They don't get matted up. Like I have zero issues, zero complaints at all whatsoever with this hair. I think I'm probably gonna take a little bit of a break from them just for the summer, just so I'm not as hot. But once summer's over, I'm gonna be putting these back in. I can easily say that it's gonna be probably an entire year before I need to get rid of these extensions because the quality of them is just that good. So as far as hair care and taking care of your extensions to make them last as long as possible, the number one most important thing is you wanna make sure you are using sulfate-free shampoo and conditioner. The specific shampoo and conditioner that I have been using is by the Hair Talk brand. These are sulfate and paraben free. So they're nice and gentle. They don't like suds up a lot when I'm washing my hair. You don't want to use anything that is too harsh because that's just going to make the adhesive not sticky anymore and you're going to have slippage or the extensions will just straight up come right out of your hair. And aside from it being sulfate free, you want to also make sure that it's high quality. Like get yourself salon quality shampoo and conditioner. The stuff in the drugstore, like even if it says that it's sulfate free, a lot of the times they have added silicones and just a lot of like crappy filler ingredients that just kind of leave this coating on your hair. And again, that is stuff that can break down the adhesive or just make it not as sticky. And so they can slide out. If you're spending money on this hair, you know, like the hair on your head, it's gonna keep growing, you cut it, it's whatever, it's no big deal, it's attached to your scalp, so it's gonna get the natural oils and nourishment and all that. This is basically just dead hair. So you wanna really make sure that you're using good stuff on it, because once it dries out and starts turning to crap, that's it, there's like no turning back. And I will insert some clips and show you guys exactly how I wash my hair, because I know I was getting some questions about that. But basically, I just go section by section, and I just really make sure with my fingertips that I'm getting in between every layer of hair. If you're not being super thorough, sometimes you can miss spots, and then your whole head's not really getting clean. So I just go through section by section, I just lift up the hair, I get in there, and I kind of just gently rub with my fingertips. You can even take a hair clip, and like clip up each section, like each layer, if that makes it easier for you. Especially with sulfate-free shampoo, I always shampoo my hair twice because I feel like one time just isn't enough. So I go through the first time, rinse all that out, do it a second time, and then I put my conditioner, but I just put it on the ends. I do the ends of the extensions and then just the ends of the top layer of my real hair, just so my real hair is getting a little bit of conditioning too, but you don't want the conditioner to go up at the top where the tape is, or I have this Nourish Plus conditioning mask, also by the Hair Talk brand. I will do this just on the extensions, like maybe every other time I wash my hair. And when I do this, I'll leave it in my hair for like 10 minutes or so. So I only wash my hair one time a week. Never any more than that. First of all, when you have this much hair on your head, you really don't need to. Like, the extensions never get greasy. And I mean, going through and having to wash all of this hair and dry it is pretty time consuming. So like, I just straight up don't have time to be doing it that often. So what I will do is a couple times throughout the week, I will take just the top layer of my real hair. So I will just go around like this and I just take this top chunk, I will tie back all the rest of this in a low bun, and in the sink I will just shampoo that top layer of my real hair, just so that way everything is still looking nice and fresh. Um, I do use dry shampoo in between washes as well, but sometimes it just gets to the point where it's like a little too greasy, so I just do that and everything is nice and fresh. I just don't feel the need to wash my whole entire head that often. That also is gonna help the extensions last longer as well. So anyway, after I'm done washing my hair, I just let it air dry for as long as possible. If I were to sit there and try to blow dry my dripping wet hair with all of this, oh my god, I would be there forever. And on top of that, the wetter my hair is, the longer I have to be blow drying it, the more heat I'm applying to it. And so that's just gonna like damage the extensions, you know? So I try to let my hair air dry as much as I can and then I will go through and I blow it out. My natural hair is pretty curly. These extensions do have a nice like natural wave to them when they air dry, but 
it doesn't blend enough with my real hair. Like my real hair is curlier than the extensions. So I do always blow dry everything. I always use a heat protectant spray. The one I've been using for the last couple of years is the Sebastian Trilliant. Um, make sure that you're using like a good heat protectant and that it's actually working. I've mentioned this trick before. Um, take your heat protectant spray it on the back of your hand, point your blow dryer at it. If it's feeling super hot and it's just as hot as like the rest of your hand and arm, your heat protectant isn't doing anything. So get yourself a heat protectant that is actually protecting your hair. Super important because like I said, once they're dried out and damaged, that's it. And then I will just go through and blow dry my hair like normal pretty much. I will go section by section and I just make sure that I am not brushing or pulling right at top where the adhesive is obviously i will just start like right below it and just round brush and blow it out whenever i am using any kind of heat tools because obviously like 99 percent of the time i do add curls to my hair again always make sure i use a heat protectant and i don't put my hot tools all the way up to the highest temperature. I usually will set it to like 350 degrees. If you wanna know how I achieve these loose waves, I do have a hair tutorial on this look. I will link that video in the description. As far as brushing your hair, I haven't really had any issues with my brushes getting stuck or caught on the extensions, but to be on the safe side, they do make brushes, and this has hair in it, I'm sorry, that's gross. But they do make brushes that are specifically for hair extensions. So if you just go on Amazon and just search for like tape in extensions brush or something like that, they will come up. But this one that I have is by the brand Remy Soft Pro Hair Care. I got this on Amazon for like $10. It has loops for bristles, so it doesn't get caught. It's very weird, but you can literally just brush right through your hair and it doesn't get caught on the tapes but i mean i just try to be careful you know like i don't rip through the hair i start from the bottom gently brush my way up go section by section just use common sense just be gentle with them and then when i am sleeping i always make sure that i sleep with my hair at least in a low ponytail if not in a braid just so that way I'm keeping the hair all nice and neat it'll just prevent the hair from like any friction with your pillow or getting tangled and that kind of stuff so I think that is basically everything for this video I hope if you guys have any other questions feel free to leave them down below in the comments but that's gonna be it for me thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video bye